All right, all right. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the show. I'm Tony No Dimes here with Max the Animal. We got another week of football. We got another week of betting. Real quickly, let's recap what we did. You know the drill. Last week, uh, in terms of prize picks, I hit my two square. Zach Ertz, over fantasy points. Dallas Goddard, more fantasy points. It went to the last drive, but Ertz got it done. So, get another point. Yeah, you're killing me. A little bit. Player props uh, have not been kind to me this season. I mean, not just this season, kind of historically in my life. So more of a, you know, straight bet guy. But uh, yeah, not good for me. I don't think I hit either of mine. I didn't. Not that I don't think. I did not. So is this all you got is just your one? Yeah. So what's the score now? Uh, I believe it's four to nothing. I can come back from that. Absolutely. I can come back from that. Yeah. Just a couple weeks of some good plays and you're right back in it. Uh, In terms of the pick'em draft, your boy went four and one again. You're on fire. I'm on fire with the pick'em draft. You know, week three, first time going four and one, whatever. You know, you got lucky. You do it again, could be a coincidence. Three times in a row, we are now talking about some serious fucking draft skill. 12 and three in the last three weeks. I got to boast about it because I don't know how long this is going to last. Honestly, looking at some of these games right now, I feel like my streak is probably going to come to an end. Don't feel great about any of these. Yeah, you went four and one. I believe I went one and four on the opposite of you. So uh, I think the only game I hit was the over in the Browns Chargers. Everything else, big fat L. Uh, Hate to see it. My record on the season is terrible, but what are you going to do? All you can do is just move on. You just keep going forward, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with uh, prize picks. Two square. Uh, I'll go first, or did you go first? Uh, you like, can go first. I don't know if I deserve the right to go first, but uh, let's start off. Prize picks, two square. I got Trevor Lawrence, more than 235 and a half passing yards. He's playing against the Indianapolis Colts. Matt Ryan has been just awful. Terrible. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for Trevor to really just light it up. And he's been a little down the past couple of weeks here. So I'm um, looking for some Trevor Lawrence bounce back. He's been very inconsistent, yes. but, you know, he can he can do it. It's a low line. Yeah, so uh, so last week he crushed this to you know, 286 passing yards. And then the week before against the Eagles, tough matchup, he did not. But he's been, he's been pretty consistent hitting this line. Uh, so that's why I like that. And then we head over to... Our other square, which is George Kittle, uh, more than 44 and a half receiving yards against the Atlanta Falcons. I really like this line just because of the fact that uh, George Kittle has been kind of not getting involved as much as he should. And you just know that when you have good players and you have a good coach like Shanahan, he's eventually going to find a way to get him involved. He did last week. Just uh, it was early and not, you know, in often. The, in, yeah. It was early and not often. Exactly. Which is kind of shitty to see. But. He got he went five for forty seven, which would hit, so we would be good. So if he can do that again, then I'm happy. So I expect to see some more George Kittle involvement. Basically, is what I'm saying here. Yeah, I mean, I think it could be really similar. The Niners five point favorites against the Falcons. They were six point favorites against the Panthers. I mean, they got up early, and as soon as they got a you know comfy lead, they stopped using George Kittle, which is going to be kind of concerning. Taking his more, I mean, they should be using him more. They should be using him as a you know a, a big piece of this offense because he's obviously a great. But I mean, I don't know. They like laying blocks with George Kittle which sounds ridiculous, but that's kind of what they do. I don't hate it, though. Again, another low line. Kittle's superstar. He can do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over that. All right, sounds good. I'm going to move on to my two square. My first play is Geno Smith to have more than 15 and a half fantasy points against the Arizona Cardinals. Geno Smith has been balling out. I mean, he's got to be the biggest surprise uh, of this year. Just his performances have been great. Even again, uh, even last week against the Saints with a tough defense, he was able to take deep shots, get it done. 15 just seems like such a low line for a dude who might be like a top five fantasy quarterback at this point. You know, Seahawks against the Cardinals. We got a big total. I think last time I checked, it was like up at 51. So there's going to be a lot of points scored. Seahawks should find success on the ground. They should find it through the air. Cardinals should keep it competitive. This line, I am confident to say, is a lock. Geno Smith been able to get it done four out of his last five games. Give me the more 15 and a half points. I'm going to pair that with another player in this game. I'm taking Marquise Brown to have more than 67 and a half receiving yards. He's been able to hit this line in his last four games. A couple of these times, he's crushed it. I mean, the Seahawks defense uh, might be the worst in the league, might be the worst we've ever seen in a very long time. They bleed points. They can't stop anything, especially through the air. Cardinals offense has looked so weird. It, it, like, it, it should be a lot better than it is, but... Whatever, you know, it is what it is at this point. Either way, 67 is not that big of a line, especially, again, 51 points in this game. A lot of deep shots to Marquise Brown. I feel good about this two-square. Listen, you would know better than I would, so, I mean, mine haven't been hitting. 
uh, you yours have. So yeah, you should feel good. You should feel good. All right. So for my four square, I uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna start with someone that we're all very familiar with. It's Mr. Tom Brady. Uh, we're going with more than 275 and a half passing yards. He's gone over for 300 uh, the last two weeks. He's just, I mean, nobody throws the ball more than the Bucks. I don't know if that's a fact, but they throw the <laughs> ball a lot. Tom Brady's always throwing it. It's also against Pittsburgh, so like Pittsburgh's we, defense has not been. We, we saw up what well. Josh Allen did in the first half. Pretty sure he crushed this line in the first half last week. So Tom Brady, very good quarterback, he should be able to do the same. Now back to another quarterback here for my second square, Marcus Mariota. I'm taking the more on uh, .5 interceptions. I like that. I, I was think, looking at that one. Yeah, San Francisco is one of the best defenses in the league, arguably the best defense in the league. Marcus Mariota, not a great quarterback, known to throw some interceptions. I think that the defense is going to get after it and definitely going to see an interception for Marcus Mariota on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, he's been throwing a lot of picks this year, even on low volume. Yes. And in this game, we might see a, a high number of pass attempts, uh, you know, while they're trailing. And we, we assume they're going to be trailing a lot in this game. So especially with like how Pitts back, Drake London back, he's going to be, you know, risking it a little bit more, try to get it to his receivers. I love the more of, of half a pick for Mariota. For sure. And now we go with my third square with his uh, Ramondre Stevenson, who has now got the starting role with Damian Harris out. Taking the fancy points, uh, fancy score of 16, and we're taking more. I think he's just going to get heavily involved in the passing game, and this is PPR scoring. So if he gets those six catches that I need and just the yards and he scores, t- like, this is easy. This is lightweight, light yeah. work when you're in the starting role of a New England Patriots you know, running back. so I like that one. I, it's more of the PPR aspect is what really helps him because I know he's going to get involved in the passing game. Um, right. And then on the other side, we've got David Njoku, Cleveland tight end. More than 43 and a half receiving yards. I mean, Njoku's been balling out. He went for 88 last week, 73 the week before that, 89 the week before that. He's just been he's just been one of the most consistent pass catchers on the Browns. And I think Amari Cooper's going to get, not taken out of the game, but Bill's going to focus on Amari over Njoku. And Njoku's going to have himself a nice little game. So uh, more than 43 and a half receiving yards for David Njoku. I like that. I haven't really realized how uh, productive Njoku's been this year. Might have to hop on some of his moors. For sure, yeah. He's been uh, he's been the, the player that we've been waiting for. That athletic tight end that yeah. was drafted, and we all thought he was going to be so good, and he just didn't First do anything rounder. for like two or three years, and now he's finally doing stuff, so it's good to see. Good for David. Love to see it. Good for David. Yeah. All right, so for my four square, I got some receiving lines in there. Starting off with Gabriel Davis to have more than 55 and a half receiving yards. I mean, just say that out loud, that's 55 one, yards. That's one reception. That's one reception I, I from like long that. ball Davis. Uh, and look, he's healthy now, right? He's had a couple games where he, he wasn't productive, but I think he was dealing with that ankle injury. He wasn't 100%. And against the Chiefs, this is going to be the shootout of the year. It's going to be points galore. Gabriel Davis is a must for the Bills offense, targeting him deep, targeting him often. 55 and a half, lock it up. Love that more. I'm also going to take a little dip into this Patriots-Brown game by taking the more of 50 receiving yards of Jacoby Myers. Since Jacoby Myers has been back, he has been the number one receiver for the Patriots offense. And you might be saying to yourself, ah, you know, what does that mean? Like, this isn't that great of a passing offense. Hasn't been too shabby. Even with uh, Bailey Zappi in there, he's been hyper-targeting Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers has a huge target share against Detroit, 111 yards against Pittsburgh, 95 against Miami, 55. Yeah, Jacoby Myers inserting himself as a big part of this offense. Another another factor that would really help is if Denzel Ward misses this game. He's highly questionable with the concussion. If Denzel Ward is, Ward is out, that is going to be huge for the Patriots offense and Jacoby Myers. So really like that one. And another receiving line that I got is Alec Pierce to have more than 48 and a half receiving yards. He's established himself as the number two weapon in that offense in Indianapolis. I mean, 81 yards, 80 yards, 61 yards, hit it the last three times. We see this with rookies. You know, they take, you know, like a month or so to really get themselves established if they're going to have a a nice rookie season. Pierce has seemed to do that. He's a good possession receiver. Matt Ryan seems to trust them. There's some chemistry going on. Alec Pierce seems to, like, really be eaten into the workload that we thought Michael Pittman would be dominating. I had him in mind, and I switched it. Did you? I think that was the fourth guy that I had in mind when I accidentally hit Kittle. Really? Yeah. Because now that you just said that, I was like, holy shit. Like, I, I had that. Yeah, he's he's good. He's, he's having a little mini breakout of his own. Even last week against the Broncos, when there was, like, no points scored, it was a punt fest, they really couldn't get anything going. Like, Alec Pierce looked reliable. And against the Jags, you know, Jags, Jags defense is it's a mid. 
It's a mid. So Alec Pierce, I love him to get it done. And then I found another square to top this four square playoff. Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill, the absolute wild card of yeah. this year. His projected fantasy score. Have you seen this? No. I want you to throw out a guess what you think it is. They probably have it at like 14. Three. Three points? Three fantasy points in a PPR system. He's going to get a rushing touchdown. He gets a... Uh, 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 that's crazy. Isn't that absurd? Like, it almost feels way too trappy. It's like they know something that I don't, as if like Taysom Hill's going to be out. He was dealing with a little bit of an injury this week, but I mean, I don't think he's going to be out. Like that's not the direction it's really trending in. I know Jameis Winston is going to be back, so maybe he gets used less, but I mean, dude, Chris Olave is questionable. Yeah. Michael Thomas is questionable. Taysom Hill is a part of this offense, like as long as he's healthy, no matter what. Three fantasy points is absurdly low. I'm trying to get it right now. Yeah, y'all need to hop on that before it gets taken down. Like, before Price Picks realize the mis- the huge mistake they have made, three fantasy points. That's all I got to say. I mean, you try to you you put your own line at 14, which is crazy. So, take the more. That 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 one seems like a free one. That one is more free than Steph Curry. Steph Curry, by the way, if y'all don't know, yeah. is uh rocking a free square, I believe this weekend, right? It's for the for, next... uh, for the week 1 uh NBA game. So, right. first the first week 1 the, the the first game of the NBA for for the Warriors. Jesus Christ, I can't talk right now. Yeah, we're not it's much a, of basketball it's guys. Steph but. Curry, free square. He's got to score one point. It's over uh, more than point five points, and uh, you win. So throw that in there. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, you could tack it on one of these fours and make it a five, or tack it on a two and make it a three. You, you could know. tack it on Taysom Hill, and that's free money. That's that's true too. Just Taysom Hill, Steph Curry, the two goats of their respective sports. All righty. So those are the prize pick squares for this week. Make sure you download the app. Make sure you use promo code BDGE and make sure you uh, get your entries in. Love that. Let's go on to the week six pick'em draft. I have a commanding lead and I also have the first pick this week. Whatever. No, doesn't upset you? I don't care. Not in your head right now? No. Well, I know I'm in your head because we've had a little bit of a conversation offline. I know what your number one bet of this week is and I'm not going to be a scumbag. I'm not going to take it. Take it. No, I don't want it. It's your pick. I know what you want, but it does play into what I'm going to take first, which is the Kansas City Chiefs as underdogs at home against the Bills. I know that's not the game that you were looking at with your first pick, but I have to assume that there was something on this game that you wanted. I was just going to take the over, honestly, at this point. Really? Yeah, just for the hell of it. It's two high-powered teams, whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the best way to watch this game. The NFL this season is a crapshoot. There's been more unders hitting than overs every single week. It's the the first time in, like, however many years. So, yeah. I don't know if overs are going to be due, but those are good teams to take an over on. But, yeah, you're just taking the Chiefs. Easily. I just think that these are two evenly matched teams. Like, you could put the Bills at one, the Chiefs at two, the Chiefs at one, the Bills at two. I don't think it matters either way. Patrick Mahomes at home as an underdog doesn't really happen. Bills coming off a slaughter fest against the Steelers. Uh, Chiefs coming off a close one against a divisional rival of the Raiders. I, I don't know. I just think it's disrespectful to be giving the Chiefs points at home. The Chiefs secondary also getting healthy. We saw the magic of Patrick Mahomes last week. Like, it does not matter how much that are down by. It doesn't matter how much time is gone, and it, it could come down to the last play, the last drive. Like, they're going to get it done, even if it's just, like, Mahomes and Kelsey. Mahomes and Kelsey is going to take you so fucking far. So, I love the Chiefs as dogs. Going to take a dog as my first-round pick. And um, I don't know if this, like, really matters, but... I almost would have felt better about the Bills if they didn't destroy the Steelers as much as they did. Like, if they got into a close match with the Steelers, it would have told me that they were, like, looking ahead for this Chiefs game, right? And maybe the Steelers just suck that much. I think they just suck. It could just be that. But if we want to go on the zigzag theory where it's like you you don't cover one week, then you cover the next week and, you know, you hit that zigzag. Bills covered last week, big time. Chiefs did not. So at home, with some points, give me the fucking Chiefs. Am I going to get to pick? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited about this Chiefs pick. Yeah, I know, but it's the first pick. you freaking taking up my, all, my, all my time here. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. What, you, you took a dog? I'm going to take a... Uh, you know what I'm going to take, because, I mean, well, are you going to take it if I don't take it? I can't tell you. I can't give you that information. No, I want to, like, save it, but now I don't think I can. Whatever. I'm going to take my favorite. I'm going to start off um, with my favorite. I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens. They're playing the New Knew York it. Giants in... New Jersey. So predictable. Um, Ravens minus six. Look, 
Giants are not as good as their record says. They're a good team for sure. They have great coaching, but the Ravens are just a top tier team. I think they're a top five team, and I think they're going to show that on Monday. And they're going to show that there's a gap here between these teams. The offense of the Ravens is just too good. The Giants' offense is not going to be able to keep up. Uh, their defense is pretty solid, but you're going to be running around trying to chase Lamar Jackson all over the place. It's just never it never goes well for defenses usually. So uh, give me the Ravens minus six, my favorite. That's definitely the side I would lean to if I'm picking this game. I don't know if I'm going to throw anything on it or have any action on it uh, by game time. There's something weird about the Giants. Like they shouldn't be as good as they are, but Brian Dayball. Coaching Mages, matters. Yeah, 100%. And he's proven that single-handedly. So it's a good pick. I knew that's where you're going with number one, so that's kind of why I uh, wanted to snag that Chiefs game before you. With my second pick, I'm going to take what I actually think is the best bet on the board today. Talked a little bit about it offline, too. The Jets and Packers to go over 45. Not a game that you were looking at? Not at all? All right, well, doesn't matter because the Packers have gone over this line their last two weeks against the Patriots led by Bailey Zappi and again against the uh, the Giants in London. Uh, Jets threw up a bunch of fucking points against Miami. They dominated, you know, Skylar Thompson and, and the Dolphins. That's whatever. Uh, the point is Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, they're the two guys where when they come off a loss, they take that to heart. And then the next week, they're going to come out and they're going to slam the gas pedal and show no mercy and never let up. They're going to run up the scoreboard no matter how much they're up by. And look, the Jets' offense themselves, they're not bad. They're playing with some swagger. It's like no one told the Jets this offseason that, hey, you're supposed to be bad. So they believe themselves. I, I it, They feel like the Lions of last year where they, like, they play for Dan Campbell. The Jets this year, they're playing for Robert Sala. They're, they, they just got swag. I like the swaggy Jets this year. So uh, over 45, pretty low total. The only thing I'm really concerned about is uh, fucking Rodgers. It's like coming up with a thumb injury. He's assumed to play. He'll be all right. Yeah, give me Rodgers with four fingers. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> all right, so I got two games I really love right here. I just don't know which one I want to go with because I'm trying to read you. Um, I want both of them, but I can't. When do you not want? I think this is all right. I'm going to go with uh, my under. I'm going to take the under 43 and a half in the Bengals Saints. Look, T. Higgins didn't practice today. It's Thursday. Jameis Winston most likely going to play, but coming back could be a little shaky. The offense could have, you know, take a couple drives to get really going. Uh, this is a home game in New Orleans, so, you know, that favors their defense, which has been pretty solid. They, they The pass rush is pretty good, and that's kind of what, you know, when you're playing against the Bengals, Joe Burrow gets sacked a lot, so I think they're going to be able to get after Burrow. No T. Higgins, hopefully. Uh, not hopefully, but looks like no T. Higgins. Looks like Jameis Winston. I just project uh, some low-scoring game here uh, under 43-and-a-half. Man, that's a low total. It is. I don't know if I have the guts to take the under on it. That's why you ain't me, dog. Yeah, that's why I ain't built like you. That's why you got a good record, and I don't. I do <laughs> <laughs> I do have a ticket on Cincinnati minus one and a half. Seems a little trappy, like obviously on paper, Bengals seem like the better team. Saints probably match up with the Bengals well, though. Just the Bengals seem so predictable on offense that I do think the Saints have a good shot at, you know, shutting them down. And obviously Jameis Winston, the turnover machine he is, could struggle to score. So I don't know. I might have just talked myself and taken the under. So I think that's a good pick. I am also going to go with an under. Love that. Don't take my game. This one, this one's tough. Another low total. Oh, no. uh, I'm going to take the under of 42. Oh, my God. Jacksonville, Indianapolis. All right, we're good. Okay. Is Ooh. that the number that you're seeing? I, I look at, like, consensus, not the uh, the, the fan. For it? It's 42 and a half. 42 and a half? Okay. I'm taking under 42 and a half Colts, Jags. Look, we saw last week the Jags and the Houston Texans score, like, maybe 20 points together. We also saw the Colts and the Broncos, again, prime time, maybe score 20 points. I think this game is going to be really similar to last week with the Texans and uh, the Jaguars. Mm -hmm. These offenses are just inconsistent. They're constantly sputtering. The defenses aren't bad either, but like mostly what it comes down to is like Trevor Lawrence is inconsistent and was due for a bounce back last week against Houston. And the fact that he couldn't get it done, to me, kind of a red flag. Matt Ryan also, he just looks washed. He, he just looks so bad. He's, he's got a noodle arm. He looks, he looks terrible. He right. can't throw it deep. Yeah. He just can't. 42 and a half. It's a low total. I just, it feels like a big under still. Still feels a little too high for these these offenses. I don't know. I'm, I'm not feeling either of these teams. AFC South, it's the garbage division this year. 
There's always one division that's just absolute trash, yeah. and this is it. I mean, they're they're it a lot, but yeah. All right, I got an underdog. Underdog. Yes. Okay. An underdog for you. I'm taking the Dallas Cowboys plus six and a half against the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday Night Football. It's all the way up to six and a half now. Yeah, that's why I like Damn. it. They're, these are both good teams. Uh, Eagles. They're a very good team. They're probably a top five team, but they haven't had the best of competition. They haven't played against the best teams yet. I think the Dallas defense is going to be a very good test for them. They could win this game. I don't know why I think Dallas ends up winning this game, but I just love the plus six and a half. I think it's enough points for them to at least cover. What's his name? Micah. um, Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons is going to get after. Trayvon Diggs is there. The defense is good and solid. And yeah, Jalen Hurts is very uh, versatile. But uh, I think they're going to find a way to shut him down. Give me Dallas. I don't hate it. What does concern me a little bit is like the Eagles' O line seems to be getting healthy, and that was like the one thing I was waiting for before I threw a bet on this. I do think the Eagles are going to be able to like have their way on the ground. Dallas pass rush is is great, obviously. It, to me, it doesn't feel like Dallas matches up well with Philly. But we are talking about a divisional rival, so two teams that know each other really well. Either way, six and a half, probably too many points. Yeah, definitely could see them winning straight up. All right, I have a favorite and my flex still to come. There were a lot of favorites that I liked uh, going into this, although games are now starting to disappear off the board, so I'm kind of in a pinch here. I I don't feel great about it, but I I feel good enough to bet it. I've bet this in real life, so I'm just going to take it. Cardinals minus 2.5 against the Seahawks in Seattle. Don't love that it's in Seattle. Don't really love the... The bullshit that's going on in Arizona, Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury, he's just not it. It feels like he never comes with a good game plan. It, it seems like he relies on Kyler Murray doing a bunch of scrambling bullshit in the back. And I hate this team, but I just don't think the Seahawks are good. And it feels like the the market and the public loves the Seahawks. Yes. Like, it feels like this should be over three points. The Seahawks defense, I know I've Seahawks, said this before. I mean, the, the 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 Cardinals just had a tight game with the Eagles, who was a very good team, and I think they're much right. better than the Seahawks. Like, if they, had, if they had Matt Prater back, if they even had a legit kicker, they would have sent that game to overtime. It was competitive. The Seahawks, I just think, are going to be one of those teams that, although they play well, their offense looks nice, they're just dropping all games because yeah. they're, they don't have the defense to support Geno Smith. Maybe this is me, but I'm so down on the Seahawks. I think they are better than what I projected them to be going into the season, but they're still, like, not there. Cardinals need this fucking game. I mean, yeah, there, it's not it's not a must-win game, but it is a must-win game because it's division. Gotta yeah, win. and I, I just Gotta think, win. like, it, it, in terms of, like, what we were expecting the Cardinals to be going into this year, they dropped this game. They are in some hot fucking shit. Yeah, it's going to be tough for them to get there, find their way out. Okay, you took a uh, a favorite and a flex already, right? Uh, no, I still have my flex open. So, oh, shit. Yeah, I got I got my whole lineup set outside of a flex. I got a flex right here that I'm going to take. Okay. So I'm going to take my flex. I'm going to go with the Vikings minus three and a half. Like Look, it. yeah, they're in Miami, but you know who is in Miami's starting quarterback jersey this week? Skylar Thompson. So I just don't have faith in the third string quarterback. Yeah, I think McDaniel is probably going to figure out a way to you know, make it work, but I don't know if it's going to work enough to cover the three and a half. Vikings have been a little disappointing. Uh, the offense has been a little disappointing, but I know that they have the ability to put up points in bunches, you know, between guys like Thielen and Jefferson and, and Cook. So it's there. They just got to put it together. I think they'll, they'll have a chance to do that this week against the uh, against the Dolphins. So give me the Vikings minus three and a half. It looks, I think it's a game that everyone's looking at going like, oh, like they want to take the Vikings, but they're like, nah, like the Dolphins are going to win. But like, it's just like, you have, it looks like a trap game, but it's not. Vikings are going to kill them. Yeah, I, I I think that's actually a really good move. Damn, kind of salty. I didn't I didn't take that or pick it higher. Yeah, you suck. Yeah. All right, so I need to fill out a flex spot. I can go anywhere uh, in terms of a total or a spread. Yo, not gonna lie, <laughs> not gonna lie. Panthers plus ten. Don't do it. Is hella points. Not, not, that's not hella with, points for not a total. Not with what's his name though. PJ Walker. Yeah. PJ Walker's bad, but can he be worse than Baker Mayfield? I just don't. I just don't touch that game. I probably, I probably shouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't touch that. There's, there's def- What are you looking for? You have a flex, right? Right. You I can do, do anything anywhere. you want. I can do anywhere. I can go you can do anywhere. Anything you want. And I not might just fuck go. around with the Panthers. It's not dude. where you want to go. No, absolutely not. I do like that. Matt rules out though. I do. I, I feel like that. You know. I don't want to give you a free one here, but I feel like the Bucks minus eight and a half is just sitting there. It is. No, that's that's not my alternative. I'm um, I'm talking myself out of the Panthers right now. Yeah, you should with a backup quarterback and CMC on the trade block. I know, but like, God damn, that's so many points. Yeah. And Rams look bad. Yeah. 
And that's why they're going to turn it around. Do you actually think so, though? You actually think this is going to be the week? Yeah, I mean, it's a, the Panthers are a good team to get bounced back against with the new head coach, too, and everything. All right, I'm not going to do it. We talk a lot about a game I'm not going to pick. I'm going to go back to the well with it. I don't know if I actually feel better about it, but I, just by principle, I'm taking the 49ers minus five and a <laughs> I half. I knew it. 49ers minus five and a half against the Falcons. Look, like, 49ers are just a way better team. Homer. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Falcons have yet to not cover a game. So they are due to so, blow one of these things. And uh, I think this game could go really similar to how the 49ers played last week against the Panthers. Falcons defense, obviously, pretty dog shit. The one thing Atlanta does have going for them is their offense is more functional than Carolina. So it should be more competitive. Um, I do think Kyle Shanahan has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder against Atlanta. You know, I think this is going to be like a big game for him. Revenge game for him. Right. It's a revenge game. And also that year they made it to the Super Bowl when they went 13 and three. One of the games they dropped was to Atlanta. So I I feel like he has something, you know, to prove like he hasn't really proved himself to get over that Atlanta hump yet. You know, I think Jeff Wilson will have a big game on the ground. I think Jimmy should be able to keep the ball safe. You took Mariota to throw a pick. So that should help. Yeah, probably. I think this should be more like minus six and a half, minus seven. So it's not huge, but I. It's enough. Fifth round pick, I'll lock it up as a fifth round pick. Look, the Niners are a team that probably just gonna keep getting better and better every week, so you can't really can't really hate this. I mean, if they if they don't cover, it's whatever, but like you gotta feel good taking the Niners at this point. Right. I, I feel really good that they're gonna win this game. All right. Let me finish us off with uh, I'm gonna take an over. You have to take an over. Taking over 41 and a half in the Panthers Rams game. Oh my Let's god. Go! You sly son of a bitch. I had bitch. to do it. I needed it. It's the only over I like. Oh it's such god. a low total. Look, the Panthers are coming in. They got a oh new head coach. God, they got a new dude. quarterback. They're going to be fired up, ready to go against a struggling Rams team. Oh, Let's go. Fucking slut. Over 41 and a half. I'm telling you, this is going to be Christ. There's going to be scores. There's going to be points for like PJ Walker. He's going to be scoring. T- he's going to be rushing you, for touchdowns. You like the Panthers plus 10, don't you? I do. Yeah, I know you I do. do. <laughs> I talked myself out of it. I could see it in your talk, eyes. You were like, I talked I, you out of it. You did. I talked you out of it. That's how it's done, everybody. All right. You you, you, know, like you got something you love. You, you got to play a little dirty sometimes. You got to be a little sneaky. Oh, my God. Dude, what if the Panthers win this game? They might. Plus 370. That's pretty. Uh, like, I don't Ram- think they'll win, honestly. I don't think so either. It's but it's in Los Angeles. Not like it matters, but like. It's one of those times where you're catching like the struggling, the struggling Rams and like maybe a revamp panthers team for one week like not that they're gonna finish the season good at all but you're just catching it's the the pump up week for like all right we got the the matt rule was the problem right we all agreed all right he's out we got this new guy let's go go let's go play and everyone gets pumped up like remember when uh john gruden was fired last year and for like a second rich passaccia or whatever his last name is for the raiders was just like hot shit yeah like i feel like this could be similar to the panthers and like i said pj walker probably probably worse than baker mayfield but we're talking about baker mayfield yeah like how much worse can you actually get Ah, I like that. I like that. I've been waiting on taking the Panthers plus points in in real life. Like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna d- probably do it. Don't. I'm gonna probably do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> I feel good about this week. Actually, I feel real good about my picks. I think I'm finally getting on on track here. This whole format has been throwing me off because I'm getting in my own head about what you're gonna pick. So I'm trying to like pick other games and then just picking what I like. Yeah, for the most part, that's just kind of what I've been doing. Like if a game leaves the board, so be it. You just move on to the next best no, one. I you let like. it get in my head and ruin my entire draft. Yeah. Yeah, I can't be doing that. I mean, I played into I played into a little bit what you were gonna pick just because I knew what your favorite one was. So it I was talked like, about it a lot this week. In the yeah, office. you did. So yeah, you did. I respect that. Yeah. I respect that you respected me, and then I disrespected you at the end. By you playing did. Dirty. You got me back for Look, sure. You gotta do what you gotta do when you're down by like nine picks or whatever I am. So honestly, though, I would rather lose with the Niners minus like five and a half than the Panthers plus ten. Like if I take the Panthers and lose on that one, I'm like I should have seen that. I deserve coming, it. right. Yeah, yeah. I deserve that's on me. If I lose with the Four Nine, it's like whatever. They were the better team. Like they should they should be covering this game, whether or not they do. They should be covering. You're right. You're right. All righty. That's all we got for today. Make sure you uh, hit the thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe to the channel, all that beautiful stuff. Uh, promo code BG on prize picks. Comment how awesome uh, my picks have been. And that you <laughs> love the show. Uh, thanks for watching. That's it. That's it. Catch you next week. We're out of here.